We begin from Kaduna, where bandits today attacked a government primary school at Kuriga community of Chikun, local government area of the state, abducting scores of children. Governor Ubasani of Kaduna State, who visited the community later in the day, assured the residents of the safe and timely return of the kidnapped children, stating that security agencies are working round the clock to ensure their release. He also reiterates his administration's commitment to tackle insecurity in Kaduna. Koriga, a sleepy community in Trikun local government area, is about two and a half kilometer journey from the Kaduna state capital. The community shares boundary with Biriningwari local government, one of the hotbeds of banditry in Kaduna state. The community came under heavy attack on Thursday morning by bandits who invaded the government secondary school and Lear Primary School, both located within the same premises. <laughs> Following the attack, Governor Uba Asani abandoned his official engagements for the day to visit the community. arrived Kuriga almost at nightfall and heads straight to the palace of the village head, Lawal Abdullahi. According to one of the secondary school teachers, Sani Abdullahi, 287 students were taken away by the bandits, 100 from primary and 187 from the secondary school section. While thanking Governor Sani for his prompt response to the attack, the tearful village head appeals to him for a permanent security formation in Kuriga community. While condoling with the people and families of the kidnapped children, Governor Sani assures them that he is working with the security agencies to ensure the safe and immediate return of the children. He also promises to establish a permanent police station and military base in Kuriga community. We are doing our best. I'm going to work with the community leaders. I want to work with the traditional leaders here, as well as the youth, to ensure that every time we turn back home by the grace of God, I discuss with the National Security Advisor. He has assured me they are also working, and I've also spoke with the GOC Women Canal Division. He has also assured me they are also trying. Here we are with the Commission of Police and the Director of SSS, and all of them are working closely with the government under my leadership. No child will be left behind. All of them will come back home by the grace of Inshallah. Already, a manhunt of the bandits has commenced with troops deployed to Kuriga and other surrounding areas with a view to rescuing the kidnapped children. Let's head to the National Assembly now as to talk in security where the House of Representatives is calling for the immediate release of over 200 women abducted in Borino State. This follows a motion of urgent national importance by Honorable Zainab Gimba urging the security agencies to be proactive so this does not go the way of the Chibok girls. Our correspondent Terry Kumi reports. The Green Chamber is scanty as lawmakers converge for the final plenary session of the week. That looks very good on you. Very good. As the world celebrates the International Women's Day, the House considers a motion calling for the revisitation of the gender bills that failed in the Ninth Assembly. The House resolves that to commemorate with Nigerian women and women all over the world and revisit all the gender-based legislations of the Ninth Assembly on women participation in politics 
and the other sectorial matters. As plenary progresses, an urgent motion drawing attention of parliament to the abduction of over 200 persons in Borno State is raised. Also notes that the abduction took place last Sunday the 3rd when the women went to fetch firewood in the bush for domestic and commercial purposes. The insurgents freed the old age but abducted about on, or about or almost 300 even young girls and boys. Uh, the House also resolves to task all security agencies to rescue all abducted victims. In the meantime, the House has reached a resolution to investigate suspicious practices of ministries, departments and agencies, as well as parastatals, in the execution of capital projects in the Appropriation Act. Right now, the Speaker will resolve as follows. Mandate the Committee on Financial Crimes and Intergovernmental Affairs to investigate the procurement of capital projects by all federal government ministries, department agencies, parastatal and institutions to recover the retired sum from the execution and report back within four weeks. The House then turns its attention to the National Population Commission and resolves to investigate the 200 billion naira so far spent on the suspended 2023 population and housing census. The House therefore is solved to mandate the committee on population to invite the director general of the National Population Commission to explain details of how the 200 billion meant for the suspended 2023 population and housing census was spent and report back within four weeks for further legislative action. The 2023 census was suspended indefinitely by the immediate past administration in the build-up to the 2023 general elections, and the House believes that before any other funds would be appropriated, the previous funds must be accounted for. Terry Ikumi, Channels Television News. Meanwhile, the Borno State Governor, Baba Ganazulam, says available information indicates that some of the women and girls voluntarily returned to the bush. Well, Governor Zulam says the exact number of the abducted women and girls is yet to be ascertained, as no official communication has been made to his office. Well, the governor made this declaration while playing host to a team of diplomats, UN delegation and development partners in Meduguri, the Borno State capital. It's a visit of a delegation of diplomats and development partners led by the British High Commissioner and the UN country representative. This visit comes after the recent abduction of a large number of women and young girls from three IDP camps in Ngala on the fringes of the Lake Chad. After condoling with the state government on an unfortunate incident, the British High Commissioner states the purpose of their visit. We want to understand recent progress and also to better understand the present situation and also, of course, your future plans for the state and in particular to discuss what are the safe and durable solutions that are possible to address this big challenge of improving the livelihoods of so many internally displaced people. Borno State Governor Professor Babagana Zulum gave statistics of the humanitarian challenges confronting his administration before speaking on the recent abduction. The government is committed to implementing the durable solution targets for over 2 million citizens over the next three years so that by April 2027, the 2.5 million displaced persons, 2 million of whom live in IDV camps, will be returned to their local government of origin. We still have about 1,250,000 internally displaced persons living in their difficulties. According to the governor, there are about 1.2 million internally displaced persons still living in camps, and at least 86,000 houses will have to be constructed in 64 destroyed communities in order to relocate these people from the camps. In continuation of the trial of former CBN Governor Mr. Gordon Emefiele, a forensic analyst has confirmed that the document used to request the payment of $6.2 million of foreign election observers were forged. Another witness, Bamai Meriga, called by the EFCC, informed Justice Hamza Mwazu of the Federal Capital Territory High Court Abuja that following forensic analysis of the disputed documents, he discovered that there was a clear evidence of forgery of signature and the seal of execution were different from the original. 
He also confirmed that the signature were not those of former President Mohamed Buhari and former Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Mr. Boss Mustafa. On the cross-examination by counsel to Mr. Mefile, the witness said he is not a staff of the EFCC and was not being paid by the anti-graft agency, but his salary was domiciled with the Nigeria Immigration Service. A counsel to Mr. Mefile, Matthew Burka expressed displeasure and respect of the conduct of the witness, saying that the witness was misleading the court by evading questions. Well, the trial has since been adjourned till March the 11th for continuation. On the National Broadcasting Commission, the NBC has appealed the November 23rd, 2023 ruling by Justice James Omotashaw of the Federal High Court of Abuja, which restrained it from imposing fines on radio and television stations. And Justice Omotashaw had dismissed a motion by the commission, praying him to set aside his judgment delivered on May the 10th, 2023. In a notice of appeal filed by senior advocate of Nigeria, Babajide Koku, the NBC is asking the appellate court to set aside the ruling and the judgment delivered on May the 10th of 2023. In a foreground notice of appeal, the NBC says it was against the entire decision of Justice Omotosho. On the May the 10th judgment arose from a suit instituted by an Abuja-based lawyer, Noah Ajari, on behalf of media rights agenda, MRA, challenging the powers of the NBC to find broadcasters following a March the 1st, 2019 announcement by the NBC that it had imposed a fine of 500,000 R each on 45 broadcast stations for alleged contraventions of the Nigeria Broadcasting Code. In setting aside the fines of 500,000 R each imposed on the stations, Justice Omotosho held that the NBC was neither a court nor a judicial tribunal to make pronouncements on the guilt of broadcast stations, notwithstanding what the NBC code says. He adds that the Commission's action violated the Constitution. In part two, after the break, Nigerian Institute of Public Relations holds Nigerian Public Service Week in collaboration with the federal and state governments. Please stay with us. If you just joined us, you're watching the News at 10, coming to you live on Channel's television from Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. Bandit storm LGEA Primary School, Kuriga Community in Chikun, local government area of Kaduna State, abducting over 200 pupils. Forensic analysis confirms forgery of signatures used to request payment of $6.2 million to foreign election observers during the 2023 general elections. The body of benches ask legal practitioners to refrain from addressing the media when fully robed, particularly after court sittings. And Sweden officially joins NATO after it completed its ascension process in Washington. The chairman of the body of benches, retired Justice Mary Peter Odili, is asking legal practitioners to refrain from addressing the media when fully robed, particularly after court sittings. Justice Peter Odili issued the directive on the third day of the 2024 call to bar ceremony in Abuja. She says lawyers who engage in media trial erode the fundamental pillar of an individual's right to a fair and unbiased trial by swaying public opinion. The atmosphere is calm and solemn as young lawyers converge on the conference hall of the Body of Benches Complex for the final day of the 2024 call to bar ceremonies. Benchers may take their seats. The guests also may be seated. Presenting the candidates to be called to the Nigerian bar, the Director General of the Nigerian Law School applauds the academic standard of the school. As reported previously, we have continued to leverage from the achievement of our past teachers and leaders. Today, the Nigerian Law School has had sustained its enviable growth and development for six decades, to the admiration of many 
The importance of the Nigerian Law School in manpower training and development of our country cannot be overemphasized. Before presenting her address, the chairman of the body of benches asked the young lawyers to adorn their wigs to the admiration of their parents and relatives. You may now put on your wigs. In her address to the young lawyers, the chairman of the body of benches frowns at media trial. Lawyers who engage in media trials sway with public opinion and potentially skew the trajectory of justice, sometimes turning the people against the courts. It is unethical for lawyers to be addressing the media when fully robed, particularly after court sittings, as we have seen in recent times. Poor remuneration for young lawyers is again brought My to the fore. Friends, please sit down. For several years, I've been trying to work some minimum wage for young lawyers. I think um, this charge today is a call to duty and a renewal of, of that. For the fact that the young lawyers in Nigeria should have minimum wage, I believe that the Nigerian Bar Association, in conjunction with other stakeholders, should try to regulate and fix remuneration and living wage for upcoming lawyers to encourage them and to bring about discipline and the much needed cohesion in the profession. The event climaxes with a special handshake for outstanding students. Agbo Zuri Olumachi Blessing. Agbo Johar. 1,212 new lawyers participated in the exercise on the last day of the ceremony. The president of the Africa Development Bank, AFDB, and recipient of the 2023 Obafemi Awolowo Prize for Leadership Award has suggested five thematic points the Nigerian government must adopt to achieve growth and development. Now, some of the areas pointed out by Dr. Kumia Additional include rural economic transformation and food security and health care. He also wants the government to pay attention to education and affordable housing. Dr. Additional was speaking at the award ceremony held in Lagos. Nigeria must completely transform its rural economies to ensure food security for all. A better Africa must start with a transformation. And that is because 70% of our population live right there. Rural poverty today is extremely high. And at the heart of transforming rural economies is agriculture, the main source of their livelihoods. When agriculture moves away from being a way of life to a business, everything changes. Just as every nation has a national defense system. To protect its citizens against all forms of aggression, the same is true for healthcare systems. A nation without a sound healthcare system is a nation that is defenseless against the invasion of all forms of diseases and pandemics. COVID-19 exposed the weakness of African economies on health systems. While developed economies spend $19 trillion on fiscal stimulus programs, approximately 19% of the global GDP. Africa spent only $89 billion. Nigeria needs education for all. Nigeria today accounts for 15% of the total population of out-of-school children, according to UNICEF, which is over 10.2 million at primary school, 8.1 million at junior secondary school. This it's not a gold medal that Nigeria should be proud of. I was at a function one day, I was asked, why don't we upgrade all the slums? And I said, there is nothing called a five-star slum. A slum is a slum. And therefore, we must do everything possible through new financial instruments to make sure that every individual can have a decent home that they can call theirs. To succeed with much needed welfare risk and people-centered policies across Nigeria as espoused by Papa Awolowo, 
it is necessary to change the governance system and decentralize governance to the states in order to provide greater autonomy. <laughs> states that have tremendous potential, have po tremendous potential to become even more financially autonomous through greater fiscal prudence. If states focus on unlocking the huge resources they have based on their areas of comparative advantage, they will rapidly Public relations as a tool for information and reputation management is expedient for economic development. Now, recognizing the strategic importance of this, the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations, NIPR, is putting together the Nigerian Public Relations Week in collaboration with the federal and state governments to engender a new culture of doing things in government, ministries, and the private sector. Our chairman of the Nigeria Public Relations Week, Mr. Yomi Badijo Kusai, who spoke in an exclusive interview with Channels Television, highlights some of the expected outcomes from this initiative, scheduled for April the 22nd to the 26th this year. Our focus of the Nigeria Public Relations Week, Nigeria Public Relations Week, convened by the Nigeria Institute of Public Relations, is to draw attention to the synergy between economy and reputation. Uh, when you have a good reputation, the chances are that your rep economy will be good. Uh, why? Because um, when we talk about reputation, we talk about trust. And uh, public relations is the management discipline that establishes trust, sustains trust, uh, in some cases rebuilds the trust for comparative reputation advantage. Uh, nobody wants to deal with an entity that they don't trust, uh, be it public, be it private. Uh, and I think some of the challenges we've had with Nigeria as a country is that there's a trust deficit that is operational. What the Nigeria Public Relations Week will do is to bridge and attempt to bridge that trust deficit. We are going to be partnering with all stakeholders, both public and private. And of course, government is very critical to us. So that's why we are hoping that the Minister of Finance and the Coordinating Minister of the Economy will join us. We already have word that the Central Bank Governor has agreed to be part of it. Uh, we're looking at uh, some policy, the policy advisor to the President, uh, Ms. Uh, Adiza Balausman, and a couple of other people. And we would like to engage them in the importance of public relations as a trust builder. There are things that you would say or things that you ought not to say because sometimes some things that you say may uh, do more harm than good. So let's head to the nation's capital now where Mark Wilgo Yusuf is standing by to give us the very latest from our Buja studio. Great to see you again, Mark Wilgo. Indeed, Ayo, it's good to see you too. Well, it does appear that the president is trying to make the public trust his fight against corruption as he's now approved the indefinite suspension from office. The managing director, CEO of the Rural Electrification Agency, Ahmad Salihiju Ahmad, alongside three executive directors of the agency. The affected directors are Olani Alaba Netufo of Corporate Services, um, Baraka Saju of Technical Services, Sadatu Belgori of the Rural Electrification Fund, the RAF. According to a statement by the Special Advisor on Media and Publicity to the President, Ajuri Ingalale, the suspension follows new findings from a comprehensive investigation into the financial activities of the agency. President Tinobu has ordered a wider investigation into the conduct of the officials in a fraudulent mis-expenditure amounting to over 1.2 billion naira over the past two years, some of which has already been recovered by anti-graft agencies. The president has also appointed a new management team to serve in acting capacity with immediate effect. They are Abba Abubakar Aliyu, Managing Director, CEO, Ayoade Boiga, who is the new Executive Director of Corporate Services, Omar Abdullahi Omar, who is Executive Director of Technical Services, and Doris Ubo, Executive Director of Rural Electrification Fund. There's also Olufemi Akinya Lure, who is the Head of Project Management Unit, at the Nigeria Electrification Project. 
Meanwhile, President of the Senate, Senator Godswill Akpabio, is calling for a review of the Siemens power contract signed under the previous administration. He gave the suggestion after the consideration of a motion on the failure of a 4.2 billion naira transmission line from the Okpai Independent Power Project to communities in Delta State. Senator Akpabio equally criticized the privatization of the sector, a project he believes has worsened the nation's epileptic power challenge. Our National Assembly correspondent, Gloria Omezioke, reports. So, uh, those who are in the epileptic power supply in the country becomes a moot point in a general debate on the last day of the weekly plenary, particularly against the backdrop of the failure of the Opai power plant to provide electricity to residents in Delta State. To date, there have been unexplained delays in executing the contract project. A project of this magnitude was awarded in 2005, and this is 2024, almost 19 years after this project hasn't taken off. It is either the government is paying lip service to providing power for the people, or something is wrong somewhere. Most of these independent uh, power generating plants have problems of ownership structure. They want to retain the ownership of these companies. They do not want to open up the ownership of these companies for additional equity participants. They expand their operations and meet the expectations of the areas that they are operating. Let this unit take the bold action of reviewing the entire power system. Anybody who talks of reviving the manufacturing sector knows that it, is a, it will remain a huge joke if we do not have stable, steady, quality power supply to drive our manufacturing sector. It is apparently a thorny issue for the Senate in this preliminary debate and goes beyond the subnational. Recently we had the ambassador of, uh, of Germany to Nigeria and, and they, she paid a courtesy call on the Senate and we questioned the provisions in the Simmons contract that was negotiated by the last administration. We pleaded with the ambassador to intervene so that Simmons can see the need for a review of that contract. So it's we that sometimes sabotage the system because even that contract, somebody to go and insist that for an equipment you don't know anything about, just supply it to us, we will handle the installation. Means that you are setting up back for around 10 years. The Senate Committee on Power is now expected to work within four weeks to try to unbundle the critical issue of power transmission across the chain and also try to determine cogent recommendations that are workable for Nigerians. Earlier, the upper chamber identified with women on the occasion of the International Women's Day. The president of the Senate leads other lawmakers to mark the symbolic day. From the National Assembly, Gloria Umezuki, Channels Television News. Still ahead of the news at 10, domestic equities market all share index rises by over 743 points to hit the 100,000 mark again. That's some business news. Please join us again. Welcome back. President Bola Tenubu has stated his commitment to ensuring that adequate attention is paid to research, science and development. The president made his commitment during his investiture as the grand patron of the Nigerian Academy of Science in the Council Chamber of the State House. State House correspondent Larry Lassisi reports. Gathered in the Council Chamber of the State House and adorned colorfully are fellows of the Nigerian Academy of Science. They're joined by some ministers, heads of agencies, and other top government officials. They're here for the investiture of President Bola Tinubu as the grand patron of the Academy. In her opening speech, the president of the Academy said national problems can be addressed with the application of science, technology, and innovation. For national problems to be conclusively addressed, 
there's a need for healthy collaboration between researchers, government, industry, and community in a quadruple helix arrangement. This way, there will be effective research translation, that is, the movement of research output from the laboratories and workshops to inform policy and practice. She also puts forward a suggestion. It is our belief, sir, that if the existing 263 universities, 84 polytechnics, 205 colleges of education, and many research institutes upscale community service in their host communities, there will be positive impact and sustainable economic de development in Nigeria. She applauds the president's directive for the establishment of a national research fund that will drive research and development in the country. It was then time for the investiture. President thanked the Academy for the honor and stated his conviction that science and technology have a key role to play in national development. I believe without great research and development, no nation can develop to achieve its desire. Pay attention to science and development it is a commitment that I will continue to support directly and through various government policies and programs. The ceremony ended with photographs, especially of the fellows of the academy and their grand patron. From the presidential villa, Lanre Lassesi, Channels Television News. In other news, cable television service provider Metro Digital Limited has unveiled its latest product to the Nigerian market. The product under the SLTV platform allows subscribers access to more than 50 premium channels with a year-free subscription. The managing director of the company, Mr. Ifain Wafo, explains that the platform offers the highest quality of entertainment for Nigerians. <laughs> It is a gathering of key players in cable television service and government officials at the unveiling of the latest pay TV network, SLTV. The network hopes to make a significant impact in the industry by making it affordable for Nigerians. In the wake of these positive actions taken by the federal government, Metro Digital applied and acquired a license to operate a satellite television network. The mission is to leverage the recent advancement in the broadcast technology to bring solid and premium television entertainment to every home in Nigeria at affordable prices. The platform has two packages, the basic package, which costs 2,500 naira, and the gold package, which costs 5,000 naira. There was an added incentive for the first subscribers who will get a full year subscription. The Metro team presented a dance section for entertainment. The federal government desires to improve digital networks with quality and superior programming content. We as regulators can hardly wait to see what the offering is. We believe it is new, it is innovative, it would serve the needs of um, the great population as it is right now. Nigerians have been yearning for alternative to satellite pay TV that can serve as an alternative to the existing ones. SLTV has responded very loud and clear. And from the information made available to me, they are willing to give their fellow compatriots real value for their money in terms of service quality and affordability. After the speech, delegates then moved to the unveiling of the latest pay TV network in the country. The company is promising to produce the best content for Nigerians. The dream was to set up a platform that will eventually cover the entire country. 
and that's the dream behind SLTV. So we started working on it. It was not easy, but today we've been able to achieve it. Uh, today I can assure you that every house, every village in Nigeria can receive SLTV, good quality entertainment at a very affordable price. The decoder, which is already in the Nigerian market, sells for 27,500 naira. And that's all from our Buja Studios. It's back now to you, Ayo. Many thanks, Mark. Ray. Global tech giant Samsung Electronics West Africa is joining forces with new home distribution Africa Limited to assemble the brand's consumer electronics for the Nigerian market. The strategic partnership will increase the availability of Samsung products to Nigerians and make the pricing more competitive. This is the assembly plant of a new home distribution, Africa Limited. And in a significant move, Samsung Electronics Africa is joining forces with the company to assemble consumer electronics in Nigeria. Samsung, one of the global leaders in electronics, wants to bring manufacturing closer to the heart of the Nigerian market. Hence the partnership with new home distribution, Africa Limited. Samsung being uh, global number one, we are very conscious about uh, quality, you know, and design and in terms of the processes that we follow. Okay, these are very critical for us to be able to replicate them in, in, a, in, in a country uh, like Nigeria. And we wanted a strong partner who's already into manufacturing and, you know, into, into assembling of uh, consumer electronics and using their knowledge and our expertise in, in, our, in our field. We try to merge both these things so that we come up with a fantastic product to be given to this market in Nigeria. The Tech Alliance involves the assembly of a wide range of consumer electronics, including televisions, air conditioners, and other home appliances at the NHDA assembly plant. New Home Distribution is known for their uh, presence all over Pan-Nigeria. For almost 135 years, we have been in this country. We know uh, the terrain, we know the market and uh, we have a very strong dealer base and you know uh, the samsung quality products are also known for their technology and for their designs and for the reliability and durability so i think this is uh, this is going to be a very good partnership with samsung and new home distribution samsung says it is committed to enhancing accessibility and availability of samsung products to meet the growing demands of the nigerian market but what does this partnership mean for consumers? Uh, with this particular partnership, what has happened is because we're going to be assembling products in Nigeria, it reduces the cost of the product, making it better for consumers to buy our products. And if I was going to give a range, you know, at least 15% is going to be cut off. That's one end. On the second end, what that means is we're going to be making our products more available to a lot more people. The partnership between Samsung Electronics West Africa and New Home Distribution Africa Limited not only signifies a step towards local empowerment, but also underscores the commitment of Samsung to invest in the Nigerian market. Interesting times ahead in the agribusiness sector in Nigeria as the Valency Group has commissioned its new processing and supply chain complex in Ibadan, the Oyo State Capital. The agri-supply chain complex, situated at the Valencia Industrial Park in the Oluyole local government area, is a collaborative effort of the Valencia Group and British International Investment to boost agriculture production and value chain in the country. Well, the project is expected to provide about 10,000 jobs when in full operation. In foreign direct investment in the country, with a $100 million investment, this time in New York State, and this calls for celebration. A new agro-industrial park belonging to Valencia Group is commissioned in Oluyo local government area of the state. Congratulations, Sitting on a 40-acre expanse of land, the Valencia Processing and Supply Chain Complex is set to considerably increase the processing capacity of food crops along the value chain, starting with cashew. Valencia Agro Nigeria Limited has progressively morphed and transferred from a commodity trading company in 2007 
into integrated supply chain company that exports and trade into diversified portfolio of products with a focus on agro commodities. Financial support from British International Investment PLC has helped in no small measure to bring life to Valencia's dream. Our mandate is to promote private sector development and do it in a sustainable way. And one of the areas of focus for us is the food and agri space. The British Deputy High Commissioner underscores the importance of a project of this magnitude. We want to see opportunities for Nigeria and for Nigerians. And we see through BII, we see this as being a fantastic opportunity to make a difference. For other stakeholders on the project, government should review the issue of expatriates levy to encourage more foreign investment into the country. This issue of the expatriate levy is not encouraging expatriates to come into this country, so we should look at it again. I'm not sure this is the time for that kind of a thing. And even if you're going to do it, you should give them enough time to plan. Next, the groundbreaking ceremony is performed for the construction of agrochemical formulation factory, a multi-seed crushing plant for soya and shea butter and a logistics hub among other features. Experts in food processing and the supply chain say that only about 2% of cashew produced in Africa is processed within the continent and this has led to a great decline in revenue from processing. With the commissioning of the Valencia processing plant and supply chain, this narrative may change for the better. Chairman of the Crude Oil Theft and Management Committee of the National Economic Council and Governor of Imo State, Hope Zodima, is assuring Nigerians that cases of crude oil theft are being addressed with a view to end the menace. Addressing journalists shortly after a meeting of the committee in Abuja, Governor Zodima says he and his team are working on a blueprint that will, increase, that will increase crude oil production in the country in order to improve the economy. We've been able to do a lot of uh, fact findings. We've made a lot of consultations. We spoke to critical stakeholders. And uh, we are beginning to see light at the end of the tunnel. It is our hope at the end of this assignment, we we'll put up together a report that will be very bold and courageous, that will be useful to make. And if implemented, we'll stop this monster called crude oil theft, so that the, our natural resources endowed by God, oil and gas, will be able to tap into it and develop our country. Of course, you know, the, impl the implication of increasing production and reducing losses is that we will become more solvent. Our Naira will also be stronger and the foreign exchange, access to foreign exchange easier. And the consequence of that is that the cost of living will come down and prices will begin to come down. Inflation will also be reduced. Gunmen have attacked two commercial banks in Aiba in Dekina, local government area of Kogi State, allegedly killing one security officer and one civilian during that operation. A video trending on social media indicates that the hoodlums launched the attack on the two financial institutions around 5 p.m. Eyewitness accounts has it that there were sporadic shootings and attacks on the two financial institutions and a police station in the town where unspecified amount of money was allegedly carted away by the armed robbers. It was gathered that the robbers on entering the town first attacked the police station along Aimba Ida Road, killing a policeman before killing another man. Well, it was also revealed that the gunmen trailed bullion, the bullion vans of, of the banks to their offices at Aimba, where they disarmed the security details before cutting away all the money. It's now time for some business news with Jocker Rogers. Banking so easy, so simple. Dial star 894 hash now to experience it. You first, first bank. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you, Ayo. Today, welcome to Business News. The price of global crude oil will average between 78 to 81 dollars in the coming weeks, and that's according to renowned economist and CEO of financial derivatives company, Mr. Bismarck Rowani. He believes the increase in oil price will be attributable to a weaker dollar as U.S. Federal Chair Jerome Powell plans to cut interest rates. The rise and fall in oil prices has a knock-on effect on domestic commodity prices even here in Nigeria. Mr. Rwani made the assertions on our business morning program earlier today. There are many variables that go into price of oil. But for us in Nigeria, what we are looking at today, the most important variable, apart from the price of crude, is the price of diesel. Diesel, as of this morning, was going at about 14, that is 1,451. It kind of uh, always, always kind of um, uh, it's a proxy mainly for one, the deregulated price of petrol, and two, for the value of the Nigerian currency. When the Nigerian currency weakens, the price of diesel depreciates. When it appreciates, the price of diesel actually actually increases uh, or reduces. So uh, that is one thing that we need to watch, and that has a knock-on effect onto price inflation and food inflation because the logistic costs come in. As you can see from the slides there. Uh, you can see that the price of domestic commodities have actually spiked again on the fear that the Naira is about to fall. Uh, our view is that the Naira is not about to crash. The Naira is going to be creeping, creeping back. And uh, we see some slight appreciation in the horizon. If, we, we, if that slight of appreciation actually manifests itself, I think that you are going to see those prices begin to, uh, begin to trend downwards. Well, the domestic equities market sustained its bullish momentum in today's trading session as investors bought interest in Transco Power and MTN Nigeria, which propelled the All Share Index back into the 100,000 level. Indy John Mekwa tells us more. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Stock Market Report. Well, it's going to be a positive week uh, for the NGX as for the fourth trading day today. We see the market still on a bullish trend. It added 420 billion naira to the market cap. That's about 0.75%. And congratulations, Nigeria. We're back to the 100,000 points, 100,335.30. The market cap is still at 56, 56.7 trillion naira. And after weeks of negative sentiments around MTN Nigeria, it is the market mover for today. It's open at 183 naira to close at 201 naira 30 cover. 10% increase on your investment in one trading day. Well, maybe you still want to recoup some more, so maybe you want to be patient. Let's look at the sectors now. Our lovely Fugas, uh, major market movers are down today, 2.57%. Consumer goods, 0.62%. That's because of Dangote Sugar, uh, Honeywell Flour, and uh, International Brewery, they added to bring about that. Oil and gas seems to be moving sluggishly these days, but I'm sure everybody have their turn, so it's time for oil and gas to be unchanged. For today, but uh, in summary, it's the bulls market on Thursday. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ini. Now let's check on the performance of other main. Banking so easy, so simple. Dial star 894 hash now to experience it. You first, first bank. Thank you, Joker. Sweden has formally joined NATO as its 32nd member after completing its accession, accession process in Washington. We'll hear Simon Pusey with more international news in around the world in five. Good evening and welcome to the channel's studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. Donald Trump has challenged the U.S. President Joe Biden to TV debates as the rivals hurtle towards a White House rematch following their sweep of the Super Tuesday votes. Posting online in capital letters, the Republican said he would take part in a TV forum with the Democratic president anytime, anywhere, any place. 
Mr. Biden's campaign said Mr. Trump was thirsty for attention and struggling to expand his appeal. No debates have so far been agreed ahead of November's election. Mr. Trump's challenge came hours after his last Republican rival, Nikki Haley, dropped out of the race to be the Republican nominee for the White House. The Indian Navy has released footage of a rescue operation after a Houthi missile strike on a cargo ship off southern Yemen. The owners of the Barbados-flagged True Confidence say two Filipino and one Vietnamese crew member were attacked and killed, which forced the crew to abandon the vessel. They are the first deaths since the Houthis began targeting commercial shipping in the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden last November. The Houthis say their attacks are to support the Palestinians in the war between Israel and Hamas in Gaza. A movie set to weapons handler who loaded a gun for actor Alec Baldwin before it fired and killed a cinematographer has been found guilty of involuntary manslaughter. We find the defendant, Hannah Gutierrez, guilty of involuntary manslaughter as charged in count one. Hannah Gutierrez-Reed was found not guilty of a second charge, tampering with evidence over the 2021 shooting of Helena Hutchins on the set of Rust. The 26-year-old could now face up to 18 months in prison. Miss Hutchins was killed after a gun Mr. Baldwin used in a rehearsal, fired a live round on the set of the Western in New Mexico. Mr. Baldwin also faces a manslaughter trial over the fatality. Last month was the world's warmest February in modern times, the EU's climate service says, extending the run of monthly records to a nine in a row. Each month since June 2023 has seen new temperature highs for the time of year. The world's sea surface is at its hottest on record, while Antarctic sea ice has again reached extreme lows. Temperatures are still being boosted by the Pacific's El Nino weather event, but human-caused climate change is by far the main driver of the warmth. The mother of a six-year-old missing in South Africa since the 19th of February has been charged with human trafficking and kidnapping. Kelly Smith was charged along with her boyfriend, Jacqueline Apolis, and two others following their arrest. Miss Smith's daughter, Jocelyn, disappeared outside her home in Sardana Bay near Cape Town. The four accused appeared in court but were not asked to plead in a case that has transfixed South Africa. Conservationists have raised concerns over a proposed road project that is expected to run through the Aberdare National Park in Kenya. It's a popular tourist destination where the late Queen Elizabeth II received news of her father's death. But there are concerns the construction of the Mau Mau Road project will impact the environment and local communities. At what cost to the environment will this road be done? The Aberdare is a critical water catchment for the local community and the people living in Nairobi. What we want is we want the alternative road to be considered because the alternative road is much more viable. It connects more households. It opens up opportunities for economic growth by connecting small little towns and it facilitates movement of agricultural products. And a local golfer has been left stunned after a mob of kangaroos interrupted his game at the Heritage Golf and Country Club near Melbourne in Australia. Better not stand on my golf. A culling of kangaroos. After a public outcry, the club later reversed the decision and erected fences instead. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the channel's studios in Lagos. Thanks, Simon. Welcome to Sports News. The Four Corners of Nigeria will begin the defense of their title in the football event of the African Games on Friday against Morocco. The national under-20 women team are in a tough group that has Senegal and Cameroon as the bid to retain the gold medal they won in Morocco in 2019. 
And Euro, Roma have put one foot in the quarterfinals of the Europa League this evening after hammering Brighton 4 0 as Daniel De Rossi dominated his good friend Roberto De Zerbi. Darwin Nunes' brace lifted Liverpool within sight of the quarterfinals as they also swept to a 5 1 win in the last uh, 16. Uh, Patrick Shea headed by a Liverpool's level in stoppage time for a 2 0 draw, extending the unbeaten run to 35 games. And that's for tonight. I'm Kelly. It's back to you today. Thank you, Kelly. And the main news again. Bandits today stormed the LGA Primary School Kuriga community in Chukun local government area of Kaduna State, where they abducted pupils and teachers. That's the news at 10 tonight. Thank you for watching. I'm Ayo Sunday Balogun. Do have a good night.